yesterday was fun. <laughs> uh oh, there we go again. You just can't bump this table. I was thinking to the Lord, you know, when I was setting up the camera, I was going, you know, Lord, it'll be nice someday, you know, if we ever got that way to have a little different setup. But then I got to thinking, you know, I kind of like having it kind of wobbly and, you know, kind of what it is. <laughs> that way, nobody mistakes who we are. You know, not professional, just sharing the love of God and the relationship with Jesus in a personal and intimate way that's real. I mean, you can't get much more real than this. And you know, yesterday was a reality check. It was kind of fun because for me, you know, God was inspiring, you know, and the videos, the early ones were really good, you know, and I was going along doing the normal ministry stuff and uh, posting and suddenly, bam, it was almost like hitting a wall. And uh, to put it bluntly, God stopped me. I mean, you know, it's kind of hard to explain to people sometimes, you know, like when God just goes, whoosh, kind of pulls his spirit, so to speak, and you kind of go, ah, oh, and you're just wrung out. And that's what happened was that I, I got ready to record a video, video, and it was a normal one. There's no big sin in my life or anything, or small sin either. And all of a sudden it was just, no, you know, and I, I went, okay, and stopped and stopped the ministry, stopped everything, and I thought, well, Lord, what, you know, what do you, what do I need to do? So I checked in with God, you know, I checked my devotionals, I prayed for a while, and then I kind of stopped doing what I was doing, and I went to water my plants, and all oh, this, about this far from my nose, hummingbird came up and was just sitting there, and that little sucker stared me in the eye, you know, and I was still wearing like this red, kind of like Hawaiian shirt that I was getting ready to record the video with, and so he probably thought I was a flower. <laughs> Oops. But, you know, he was staring at me and just fluttering like that far away, you know. And I was next to our, our hummingbird feeder, but, you know, we've only got a couple of them. And I'm not sure if they really know what we're doing with that hummingbird feeder, you know, because it's got stuff in it, but they like to eat around it, you know, so it's kind of weird. But God stopped me in my tracks. And I like that, you know, it's kind of like, when I went back to doing like plants and then I started cleaning house and I started doing like just puddling, piddling, you know, doing things that I really hadn't spent the time to finish doing, man, God blessed my effort. And it was like, that's what he wanted me to do, to stop the ministry work and do the things that needed to be done. So I did and I stopped and I spent time, you know, working on plants. And then when the heat came, I laid down for a second. Bam, I was out for four hours. Wow must have been tired <laughs> when I woke back up I started working on the house again and I had a lot of neat things done you know a lot more organization and a lot of cleaning up from when we went on vacation because when we went on vacation we both got sick and hadn't really recovered till just about maybe a day or two ago it was a long drawn out kind of blah, experience and uh, it goes to show you what happens when you go out of his timing so kind of looking forward to, you know, taking a weekend off, you know, going someplace like Pismo Beach or to the beach. But for now, we've just been trying to recover from our vacation, you know. We killed off all our vegetable plants and still got our tomatoes growing like crazy. But, man, it was just really a challenge, you know. And yielding to what God wanted to do was a wonderful day for me yesterday. It, it gave me a chance to really relax. Matter of fact, there goes the hummingbird right now, and he's sitting up on the tree, and I'm looking right at him. And, you know, God always has a token of his expressions of love to us in some way that ministers to you or to me. Now, for me right now in my life, it's these hummingbirds, you know. We've got one or two that just seem to visit every day, you know, and they seem to come and see what we're doing, you know. And sometimes they come to eat, sometimes they just come to visit. Like right now, he's just sitting up on that tree, just perched out, listening to what I have to say. And he's not even bothering to go eat somewhere, which kind of blows my mind. I thought they were always, like, flying around somewhere. <laughs> Watching him sit there. Oh, there he goes. This kind of blows my mind. You know, it's like, I don't know anything about hummingbirds. Maybe you do. But God, at times, will take you away from what you want to do, or you think you have to do, or you think you should do, to what he wants you to do. Because... He knows what's best for you. 
like yesterday morning I had done my devotionals and I had jumped on the bike and gone for a ride and then as I got exhausted you know from the ride sure enough it caught up with me eventually in the videos and I was sharing some teaching with somebody that was like really kind of like you know strange and so it takes a lot out of you when you are you know emotionally drained so bam I was asleep for four hours and even my wife was shocked at that as she just waved when she's leaving for work and uh, I was too so praise the Lord that's what what happened yesterday when I shut down the ministry and I even posted it said well don't know what the Lord's doing but we're stopping for now till we find out what he wants and you know sometimes God just wants to take care of you he just wants you to nestle in the bosom of his rest because you see there's always those people that say you got to rest on the Sabbath or rest on a Sunday or rest on a Monday or a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or pick a day but God has a rest for his people and he will know what's best for us so I work you know usually 12 hour days or something you know in the ministry and so sometimes God just shuts me down and the older I get the more I'm realizing I need to you know maybe coordinate it a little better and spend more time doing other things too that <laughs> maybe my wife enjoys when I actually do some housework too <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little bit Discipline brings success. But if from there you will seek the Lord your God, you will find Him if you truly seek Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I will be found to them that seek me with all of their heart. Proverbs 5.23 says that a person will die for lack of discipline and instruction. And in the greatness of his folly, he will go astray and be lost. That doesn't necessarily mean that a person will die immediately. But a lack of discipline leads toward deathly situations. In his book, A Pursuit of God, A.W. Tozer said, paraphrased, that God puts a desire in us to seek him. But we have to discipline ourselves to seek him. We can become too passive waiting for God to initiate a relationship with us. If you want to have a successful life, you have to discipline yourself to seek God every day. You know, I expect every single day of my life and I mean every single day of my life and my wife knows this you know so it was shocking to her but the reality of my life I expect God to speak to me every day I really do I expect God to relate to me as I choose and try to seek him and find him as he has made himself available to me through the death and resurrection of his son but also through the availability of his word through ministering of the saints meaning that those people that God has put in my life that minister to me you know that some of them have a word for me at times when I'm watching them you know like video, 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 videos sometimes even God speaks to me through me which is really weird because then I watch a video and I go wow that's cool God was talking to me you know and I'm sure somebody thinks well that's pretty narcissistic well not really because I'm not the one teaching <laughs> You, you may not know this, but if you get to know me, <laughs> you realize when the Spirit of God's teaching, you know, and when I'm teaching, oh, what a difference. What a difference you've made in my life. But God has always met me. Irregardless. God is always speaking to me. Like I hear a turtle dove, or I see the hummingbirds. And sure, a turtle dove in its natural state is a turtle dove. A hummingbird in its natural state is a hummingbird. But when it's combined with the Spirit of God's timing, when God chooses to open your eyes and give some kind of meaning and purpose and design to the exact day that God has created for you, and it fits in some circumstance of your life, ooh, you know why God sent that hummingbird or God placed that turtle dove right where it's at. It's not that the Holy Spirit is a hummingbird or a dove or a fire or a wind or, you know, the hummingbird. But no, he uses those things to inspire you to seek and know him. That's the point. Of course the Holy Spirit is not a fire. It's not. He, it, he is not a bird, and he's not a plane, and he's not Superman. He is the Spirit of God, and that's what he is. Now, there was somebody that you know I spent almost all day with yesterday trying to tell me that he was the seven spirits of God. I said, no. The seven spirits of God are the seven spirits of God. That's why it's called the seven spirits of God. The spirit of God is called the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Now we know that the spirit of God is the Holy Spirit because later on it says the spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. 
But nowhere does it say the seven spirits of God are the seven spirits. As a matter of fact, it says the seven spirits of God are the eyes of God that search to and fro, or that go out into the world, you know, looking around in the book of Revelation. So it's kind of like, when people try to give me and tell me their doctrine, I tell them that's not scriptural. It's a doctrine. It's a dogma. It's an idea that's been interpreted from the Bible. It doesn't mean it's in the Bible. I know that sounds confusing to you, but sometimes doctrines are kind of, you know, man's way of trying to re-say or re-speak or re-interpret the Bible. And some are good, and some not so good. Some are kind of like, you know, you go, uh, I can't come up with that doctrine. Kind of like the, the doctrine of uh, accountability. You know, supposedly there's this age of accountability, and even MacArthur and a lot of the famous people have said, well, no, there's not. You know, and scripturally there's not. And that's a doctrine, you know, that the church used to teach. Maybe it still does, you know, because they think that, you know, they want to comfort somebody that lost a baby, so babies are innocent, and, you know, they automatically go to heaven. No, they don't. You either trust the Lord or you don't. Bottom line. God knew what would happen with that child that was growing up, and there's no age of accountability where a child automatically gets to heaven. That was proved in the uh, salvation by murder case. You know, where that woman in Texas drowned her babies because she wanted them to go to Jesus? That doesn't work that way. If it did, then every woman that committed abortion would be sending their child to heaven. You see how weird that sounds? Committing an abortion would be a means of sending a child to heaven? I don't think so. Heaven is not filled up full of aborted childs. It doesn't work that way. God knows, so God doesn't waste, no offense, his spirit, so to speak, on that with which is not going to last but God's word endures forever and the soul that is saved is saved from the beginning of eternity that God wrote down their name in the book of life and whether they were going to perish in the end he'd already written that down too so he knew meaning that since he already knew sure you may have had some learning experience going through some child that maybe you thought was going to be in heaven that you don't need to worry about because you've got plenty of children in heaven and plenty of other people that are really your children and, you know, family of God and everything else. But I know that sounds harsh to you on one hand, because you want, my baby now! You know, and it was like, oh, well, you had, you know, the opportunity of giving birth and, you know, giving up the life, you know, and the life was taken from you and you don't understand it. But you see, that's where God wipes away every tear and you begin to understand His ways are just and perfect and pure and holy. And that we can accept His will for our lives. And that's kind of what God does. I had to accept his will for my life yesterday and rest in it. And now, today, we go forward always to the author and finisher of our faith that he will intervene in our life every day to let us know when we're going the right way. And sometimes, like yesterday, when we're going the wrong way and he stops us. Praise the Lord. Ow! Also, I was excited yesterday that I ordered, I got a chance to order and find a cable so that I can move the camera around better without it being knocked around and bumped around. Praise the Lord. Can't wait till it gets here. It'll make it a lot easier on these tables that are kind of quasi and I have to kind of like scrunch down or whatever. I can kind of make some camera sets maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs>